It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 990, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday and happy 1st of May, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, if you want to send a question in, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask, or you can call in your question. The number is 61 I love OHD. Thank you for doing that. I love listening to and answering your questions. And we're 10 episodes away, I can't believe it, from hitting another milestone. We couldn't have done it without your support. So thank you again. Now today, as I mentioned all week, I'm gonna be doing something a little special. I'm gonna answer two questions. And that's because one of the questions today is very time sensitive. It's about COVID-19 masks. And so I'll answer that in part two of today's Q&A. And if you're new here and are wondering why you should bother sending me a question, well, I do have my Doctor of Public Health degree with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I also have my Master of Public Health degree with an emphasis in health promotion and health education. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. When I'm not doing this podcast, I teach for the California State University System, which I am still doing remotely right now because I too am quarantined. I've also published research, presented at national conferences, and have been featured in over 71 different media outlets for my expertise on basically all things I talk about on this podcast. All right, enough about me. Let's hear today's two questions as we optimize your life. Hi, Dr. Neal. I have a health and beauty related question for you today. I'm specifically about deodorants and shampoos. So I'm hearing a lot of messages that I need to avoid deodorants and shampoos that contain parabens and sulfates. Um, So my questions are, one, what exactly are parabens and sulfates? And two, how can I, as a consumer, know that these products that I'm using are actually safe to use? Do they fall under FDA regulations or anything like that? Uh, Thanks. Hi, longtime listener Nikki. Thank you for your question. I hope you and your family are staying well and safe during these times. Now, I realize it's taken me a while to respond to your question. This is because I couldn't find any credible evidence to discuss the safety of these self-care products. There are lots of examples of anecdotal evidence on the web and potentially false claims, so we have to be careful and not believe everything we read, see, or hear. Well, other than what you hear on this show, of course. But I finally have some studies to reference, so I can feel a bit more confident that what I'm relaying here is accurate. Now, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is actually supposed to regulate cosmetics. But back in 1938, a law was passed that prevents the FDA from really doing anything to those companies that manufacture these products. So sadly, much like the nutrition supplement industry, it's the Wild West out there when it comes to the safety of makeup, deodorants, self-tanning lotions, shampoos, and other self-care products. In Europe, on the other hand, manufacturers of these products have to show that their products are safe for use and do not cause any abnormal changes to the body or cause cancer or harm to an unborn child before they can be sold on the open market. But that's not the case in the US. Nikki, you asked about parabens and sulfates specifically. I'll start by discussing sulfates. As far as self-care products go, sulfates are most often found in soaps and shampoos. Two types of sulfate are most commonly used in these products and the good news is that they both appear to be safe. Next up, parabens. Here the story isn't as clear. Parabens have been around since the 1950s, and they are basically a type of preservative. In the US, you'll find them mostly in shampoos, conditioners, lotions, and makeup. It's believed that parabens are absorbed by the skin and can act like estrogen when it gets inside the body. Because of its ability to mimic estrogen, some believe parabens may trigger harmful reactions, which in turn may increase a person's risk for certain diseases like cancer. In 2014, the European Union banned the use of certain types of parabens. And since then, as expected, many in the US are hoping that our government follows suit. Now, right now, both the FDA and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention do not have a clear statement about whether our current exposure to parabens is harmful to health. So, 
many health professionals that specialize in toxicology caution that we may want to limit our exposure to parabens. Now, there's another chemical that you didn't mention, but I feel I should. Phthalates. Phthalates are commonly found in many of these same products. This is because they can act as skin softeners and skin moisturizers. They can also prevent nail polish from cracking. But phthalates aren't just found in self-care products, which may be a problem. They're basically everywhere. They're often used to preserve food and even found in our food packaging. It is for this reason that back in 1999, the European Union restricted the use of six different types of phthalates. So the question now is, how much exposure to parabens and phthalates in particular is too much exposure? Sadly, I wish I had an answer, but we don't know. This is why, again, many toxicologists will advise that we limit our exposure just in case. So what's the deal with deodorants and antiperspirants and aluminum? Some antiperspirants have used aluminum because aluminum plugs up our sweat ducts. A plugged up sweat duct then limits the amount of sweat that can be released. Deodorants often don't contain aluminum. Instead, they may have the previously mentioned parabens. When it comes to using deodorants or antiperspirants with aluminum, and if you're worried about the risk for Alzheimer's and breast cancer, there doesn't appear to be a clear relationship between any of these. But I will admit, we need more studies really to know what's going on. So if these concern you, then try and purchase products that don't contain aluminum. But what about all natural products? You may gravitate to purchasing those thinking that they're better for you. Well, those may not always be safe either. For example, some natural products use essential oils. The problem with this is that some essential oils can also disrupt hormones. So what should you do? Luckily, major retailers are catching on to the potential harmful effect of these preservatives. CVS, Walgreens, Sephora, and Target are trying to rid their shelves of products that contain parabens and phthalates. In the meantime, when shopping, be sure to buy a product that is made in the USA, or if it comes from Europe, meets the European Union's quality standards for cosmetics. That's because products imported from other countries get missed by the FDA. So it's still a safer bet to purchase USA-made products or, again, products from Europe that meet the European Union's quality standards. And finally, look for product labels that specifically say paraben and phthalate-free right on the packaging. And now, today's second question. Hello, Dr. Neil. I'm wondering what masks filter out the COVID-19 virus perfectly. I have heard that the mask I'm using does an all right job. I'm using a 3M P100 2091 mask with reusable cartridges, but I'm wondering what masks work perfectly where I do work next to someone else. Thank you for your question, Bryce. I'm sure many are wondering whether the face mask they're currently using is providing any protection at all. The mask you described is built to filter out heavy metals and harmful particles, like asbestos specifically. But it wasn't tested technically against COVID-19. I suppose it would need to be tested against the virus, so I really can't say that wearing the mask you described is a guarantee against COVID-19. And because the CDC recommends we use face coverings to help prevent those who may have the virus and do not know it from transmitting it to others, we're finding that household masks are still recommended by them. And I'll admit, the household masks that many are using are probably not providing as much protection as your 3M mask. This is most likely due to the fact, though, that the mask you're using creates a better seal around your nose and mouth. So my best guess, and again, this would be a guess, is that your mask would probably suffice, but without actual testing of your mask against the COVID-19 virus, we can't say for sure. But if you are interested in making your own homemade face cover, The CDC says that materials made from cotton, bandanas, and t-shirts can be used to make them, and the CDC's website shows you how to do this. Oh, and I should mention that it's still recommended these be worn when keeping social distance is difficult, like in line at the grocery store or at the pharmacy. And I've seen so many people wear their face coverings incorrectly, I have to also mention that when you wear it, it should fit comfortably but snugly against the side of your face, make sure it's secured, and includes multiple layers of fabric. And again, they show you how to do this on the CDC's website. And yes, you should be able to breathe easily, 
And whichever materials you end up using, be sure that they can be washed thoroughly and machine dried without getting damaged. Oh, and stay safe, please. Thank you again for the questions, Nikki and Bryce. You'll both be entered into a very small raffle on the first of every month to win a book. And we just had one today. Now, if you want to be in the raffle, send me a question. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. You can record right from your computer's microphone. It's really easy. And you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old fashioned way and call in. The number is 61 I love OHD. Both methods are in this episode's description, which you can find at oldpodcast.com. All right, that'll do it for another week of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your continued support. Have a wonderful, safe weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.